Building on our last lecture, in this video, we're gonna talk about the one-third rule and talk about seabedding frequency. So since performing range analysis on different board textures with different preflop raising ranges really isn't that feasible for a lot of people, and because this is a beginner's course, there's a more simplified approach that we can also take to understanding the strength of our opponent's hand when they're seabedding, and that's by utilizing the one-third rule. So for those of you where it's either gonna be difficult for you to remember how different ranges connect on different board textures, or for those of you that just want a more simplified approach, well, we can use the one-third rule. And the one-third rule is very simple. It states that you'll flop a strong value hand approximately one-third of the time. So 33% of the time, you're gonna flop a strong value hand, which includes top pair or better hands. And so why is this important? Well, we know from the last video that different ranges connect at different frequencies on different board textures, but this also goes hand in hand with the preflop razor C bedroom frequency because this gives us insight into how strong their hand is based upon how often they're seabedding. So let's actually take a look at that. So what I've done is I put together an interpretation of the type of a hand our opponent is gonna be seabedding based upon their seabed stats. So let's take a look at this. So if somebody is only seabedding anywhere from zero to 33%, then that tells us that they're typically only gonna be seabedding with a strong value hand and that's gonna be our fit or fold type of opponent that's gonna play straight forward. If they hit the flop with a good hand, they're gonna see bet. If not, they're gonna check. If somebody is see betting 34 up to 50% of the time, well, that tells us that they're not only see betting their strong value hands, but they're also gonna be see betting weaker value hands. So it could be a moderate strength value hand all the way down to a very weak thin value bet and potentially they have some bluffs and semi-bluffs in there as well. But if we take that up and we ratchet it up a little more, if somebody is betting 51% or greater, well, that tells us that they're definitely gonna have value hands within their range, but they're also gonna be bluffing with pure bluffs and semi-bluffs. So what this tells us is that anything above 33% of the time typically means that they're seabedding more than strong value hands. And so how we react to that is important. That's gonna be an exploitative adjustment to our play. So to give you an example, if we have a knit that's only seabedding 25% of the time over a very large sample size of hands, and we flopped, you know, let's say middle pair with a decent kicker, if they are seabedding, then we can simply just exploitatively fold our hand. Or maybe even we have top pair with a very bad kicker same type of a deal. But on the flip side, let's say that we're playing against a maniacal or a loose aggressive or a tight aggressive opponent, and their CBET stat is 66% of the time, astronomically high. And we flop a moderate strength value hand or a top pair with a weak kicker hand, well, we're not gonna be folding to a lot of their CBETs. We're going to be exploitatively calling instead or even in some spots potentially raising. So those are exploitative adjustments that we can make based upon the frequency in which somebody see bets, knowing the one third rule as well as everything that we talked about in the last lecture. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that this one third rule, it's not gonna hold true in every unique scenario. We know that there are tens of thousands of different flops and turns in river runouts. And by knowing that, there's no way for us to know how each particular hand is going to hit each particular flop. And looking back at our last lecture, we know that certain ranges aren't going to hit a strong value hand one third of the time. Sometimes it's gonna be less, sometimes it's gonna be more. So this isn't going to hold true in each unique hand, but over the long run, on the average, it will hold true. And I actually did a separate Flopzilla analysis on this as well to make sure that I was able to test it with a variety of different hands over a large sample size. 
Now, the other thing too with using the one third rule and seabedding frequency is something that I already touched on in this video is HUD stats and particularly HUD stat sample size. So when we're looking at our opponent seabedding stats, we need to make sure that we have a decent sample size of hands to be accurate. And if you don't know what that is, go back in the course and go back to our videos where we talked about HUD stats. Take a look at those to give you an idea of what a decent sample size is. But when we're looking at our HUD stats, we want to make sure that they're a decent sample size because if they are too small, it can lead to erroneous information. So that's very important. So keep that in mind. So that's going to go ahead and conclude this video. Keep this in mind as we progress in this section and throughout the rest of this course. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.